to your prayer life. Add quality service to your prayer life. You know, last week we talked about add character to your prayer life. Fi wakun, igdagbo, ami, adurare. Today we are looking at add quality service to your prayer life. I will explain in the message. Because you can pray, 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 pray and not get results. There are things that if you don't add to your prayer life, your prayer life will not produce. Now, to, in the first service this morning, my wife taught you on how to add faith. That when you pray, believe that your prayers are answered. Now, last week Sunday, I taught you that when you pray, make sure you have three major characters. Good character. Number one, relate well with people around you. And number two, I said you should position yourself to be a giver, not just a receiver. And number three, I said you should make sure you cultivate the attitude of thanksgiving. Mabonshin Dupe, thanksgivers are always in front. So today, let's look at add quality service to your prayer life. We are going to read from Exodus 23, 25 to 27. Once they put it on screen, I will want every one of us to be on our feet. Exodus 23, from verse 25 to verse 27. Exodus 23, 25 to 27. Let's be on our feet. Yes, it's on screen. Let's be on our feet. If you have done that with your company name, give it to the ushers. They will put it on my table so that they will type it and put it on my wall. We are going to read together after the count of three. Let's all be on our feet. I purposely told them to allow the children's church to be here today. I want them to hear what I'm about to teach. After the count of three, we'll stop at verse 27. One, two, and let's go. Number three. So, you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. Verse 26. Let's go. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. Let's go. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Take it one more time. Let's reread it again from verse, the first verse, verse 25. Let's go again, one, two, and let's go. So you shall serve the Lord your God, and he will bless your bread and your water, and I will take sickness away from the midst of you. 26. No one shall suffer miscarriage or be barren in your land. I will fulfill the number of your days. And 27, before we'll see it together, let's go. I will send my fear before you. I will cause confusion among all the people to whom you come and will make all your enemies turn their backs to you. Be seated in his presence. Father, we ask, the message has been prepared according to how you have given to me. I ask, oh God, let it be well communicated. Let the hearts of the people receive it. Lord, for the blessing in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we have prayed. And amen. Hallelujah. Please help me change Brother Ojo's position. Bring him to the front. So that his daughter can allow him to concentrate. Hallelujah. Now, let's look at the message that we have had. I mean, we have read from the word of God. One instruction that carries three powerful blessing now what is the instruction in that scripture and you shall serve the lord now what are the three blessings attached to serving god let's look at it one after one the other is three number one he says his blessings shall come upon whatsoever you eat or drink for sickness to be far away now which means sickness comes as a result of the things we bring into our body so it means if you serve the lord what will god do God will take sickness away from you. He will bless your bread. He will bless your drink. And he will make sure that he removes sickness. First benefit of serving God is that he will take sickness from you. 
Number two, he said, in the next verse, he said, you won't experience miscarriage, you won't experience barrenness. Now, I'll match them together. He said, and you fulfill your years. It means, number two, when you serve the Lord, hear me, the force behind untimely death will not be allowed to operate in your affairs. When you serve the Lord, the forces beyond, behind untimely death, any tuba sin alone, be a shekoi, on tomu, on bogotan kwe ni kwai, to joma jinansi, and fanike jinyeo, he said, at the force behind untimely death, the force behind untimely death, will not be allowed to operate in your affairs. So, good things will not die in your hands, good things will not die in your life. I'm not praying, I'm only telling you the outcome of serving God. Then look at the third one. He now says, he will make your enemies to turn back. Now, what does that mean? Third benefit of serving God. Your enemies will experience pain and trouble for your sake. Which means anytime they try to attack anyone that is serving God, they experience trouble. Every time they attack any child of God, they experience trouble. So they will, they will just leave him. It's a child of God, don't touch him. You know, it's, it is part of the Abrahamic covenant that says, whoever blesses you, I will bless. Now, let's now go deeper. If you carefully observe our anchor scripture, you will see that serving God is actually more beneficial to us than to God. Now, because we are the one that will enjoy health, good health, when we serve him. We are the one that will enjoy long life when we serve him. We are the ones that our enemies will run when we serve him. So serving God does not benefit God the way he benefits us. Anyone that is serving God is actually doing it for himself. Say here. You are not serving God for God though. If you are serving God, you are serving him because of what? Because of yourself. Because you will enjoy number one, health. You'll be free from sickness. You will enjoy number two, life. You'll be free from untimely death. You will enjoy number three, victory. Your enemies will see you and turn their back and run. Three things that will happen when you actually serve God. I wrote in my note here, this is why you should not be forced to serve God. Nobody should force you. Because serving God does not pay God. It pays you. Nobody should be the one forcing you. Oh yeah, 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 oh but he went to carry one Obanje girl. He told me the story by himself. He didn't want to become born again. He let, he, after sleeping with the girl, he left the girl. He will be in the office, the girl will just appear. He will run. He will be in the bedroom, the girl will appear. He will run. He will be in the toilet, the girl will just come on, I will kill you. He will run. He now ran to Jesus. Serving God is not benefit to God, but to you. One fire, if you go see the ones of Kikini, if you miss the people who lie for me, ah, he does. If you die smoking marijuana, it does not move God. Have you heard scriptures that says, if even God said, if my people will not praise me, the stones are available, I will turn the, the, the stones to voice, and the stones will be singing, What the what the what is the Lord? So, to ban kwe kwe kwa sin Jesu, choro kwe re lo jefun pastor ni. There is no gain the pastor wants to receive from it. It's actually to your own benefit. Why? Because sickness will be far from you. Because your enemies will be afraid of you. And because you see, you will enjoy longevity. Tell your neighbor, I will serve God. I didn't hear you clearly. Shout it aloud. Now let's now go deeper. What does it mean to serve God? I want to see if I can finish this message today. What does it mean to serve God? Because a lot of people are saying, huh? come and serve God, serve God. What does it mean to serve God? What does it mean to serve God? There are about three major things, meanings to serving God. Now, what does it mean to serve God? Now, listen, the Oxford Dictionary translates serve, come down, I need to be with the keyboard, serve as to be useful to meet the need. I'm coming somewhere. 
To be willing to offer oneself for service. Now look up. Now what do we call coppers? We call them what? That they, when you say where do they go? They go to serve. Now a copper is somebody, a student who just graduated and based on the law of the land, he must serve his nation for one year. Whether he likes it or not. If they send him to Madugudi, whether he wants to go or not, the, the worst that he can do is to change the place of transfer. But that I will not serve, it's not possible. I will not serve, it's not possible. Now, what does it mean to serve God? It means to yield yourself to the purpose of God. For you to surrender yourself to the purpose of Now, when you say somebody is serving God, it's a person that has surrendered himself to the purpose of God. It's not just a person going to church. A person can be going to church and not surrender himself. Oh, oh don't you know that people at times come to church to share fake testimonies? Uh, they come to church and share, uh, praise the Lord. If you see how that angel deliver me, and it's a lie. To serve God is to surrender. There are pastors that stand on the pulpit to preach. They are not born again. They are not, some of them are not serving God. Some of them just stood up from another person's wife. Some of them just stood up from the shrine of Satan. To serve God is to surrender yourself for the purpose of God. I wrote here, the summary of serving God is to willfully offer oneself for the purpose of God. Serving God is to offer yourself for his purpose. See, it's after me. Serving God is to offer yourself for his purpose. Let's confirm it from more scriptures. First Corinthians chapter 6. Verse 19 and 20. First Corinthians chapter 6, verse 19 and 20. It says, What? With a question before it. What? Sorry, know you not that your body is the temple of the Holy Ghost, which is in you, which you, ha you have of God, and you are not your own. Let's have it on screen for others to see. First Corinthians 6. From verse 19. You are not your own. A person that is serving God have the understanding that he does not belong to himself. Or do you not know that your body is the temple of the Holy Spirit who is in you, whom you have received from God, from God, and you are not your own anymore? Verse 20. Show me verse 20. Show me verse 20. You are not your own. You don't belong to yourself. For you were bought at a price. Therefore, glorify God in your body and in your spirit, which are God's. In that body that you call your own, the Bible says it is God's own. In that spirit that you call your own, the Bible says it is God's own. So what does it mean to serve God? It is to surrender yourself. Lord, I surrender myself. For your purpose, I will explain deeper so that you can understand. Because I want you to grow. Say here. From this definition, it is clear that serving God is all about surrendering yourself for his will. The same way a copper surrenders his or herself to the will of God, sorry, to the will of the government, governing body of their country to render service. When we were praying for some of our coppers, I went last, as we members that went last year, we, we blessed them to go to their place of assignment. They are back after one year. They had to go. They, even if they didn't want to go, they had to go. Some of them were functioning in departments, but they don't have choice. They have to follow the instruction, the command of the government. That's our law. What does it mean to serve God? That's what we are saying. You are serving God, and you are still saying to God, I don't, I don't, I don't think, I don't think, you see, I don't think I can leave this character. Ah! Now, let's go deeper. I have a question I want to also answer. What should I surrender when I say I'm serving God? What should I surrender when I say I am serving God? Follow the, the, the reading. Your heart should be the first that you will have to surrender in order to receive, number one, Jesus into your life, and number two, his frequent truths. Hmm. I will explain. 
What do I surrender? The first thing, surrender your heart. Surrender your heart. That's the first thing you surrender, your heart. So that Jesus can come into your heart. That's the first thing to surrender. Some of you, Jesus have not come in. Listen, I have revealed two truths here. Your heart must be the first to be committed to him and to him alone. You can't claim to have given him your heart and still have something else you have given your heart to. Why? Because God is a jealous God. Confirm from scriptures. Go to the book of Joshua. Let's go to Joshua 24, 19 and 20. Your heart is the first one. God cannot share your heart with any other person. If you say you are serving God. He can't share your heart with any other thing. Now you say you are, I'm serving God. I'm giving my life to Jesus. I'm giving, Jesus is in my heart. But still, you see how they charm that somebody gave you for protection inside your pocket. Some of you have inside your room. Now somebody said, Pastor, what you are saying cannot happen. Cannot happen. Ah, do you know that there was a time I visited one of our members and we're talking. He had forgotten that I was the one that came to his house. You know what he told me? He said, Pastor, you know I'm a politician. I said, yes. He said, I have powerhouse. He has forgotten that I'm the one. He said, in that powerhouse, I have all my shrines and all my charms. Whenever we are going for political meeting, I go to that house. I carry those things. I wear them. When I wear it, no, no gun can penetrate me. If you try to match it, my body, it will not come in. I now say, sir, brother, are you sure you are born again? He, 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 ha, ha. That's why I say, you'll be shocked. On the day the trumpet will sound, sound, some people you respect in church won't go because they are not actually serving God. Look at what Joshua told Israel. Show me, we don't have all the time. It says, but Joshua said to the people, you cannot serve the Lord. They said, we will serve him. He said, you cannot serve the Lord for he is a holy God. He is a jealous God. He will not forgive your transgressions nor your sins. He's a jealous God. Verse 20. He won't forgive you if you decide to say you are serving him and you are still serving something else. If you forsake the Lord and serve foreign gods, then he will turn and do you harm and consume you after he has done you good. What do you surrender? Your heart is the first. Has Jesus come in? Have you told him, Jesus, your will and will alone? How do you know that Jesus is the only one you are serving? It is in your time of challenges that will know. Where do you turn to when you are faced with challenge? At times when people talk, I laugh. We face challenge of the fruit of the womb. First, our first three years of marriage, there was no child. We didn't go anywhere. Do you think that people did not try to show us things? And go to one baba and go to one place. And they try to show us things, but we don't know anyone apart from this Jesus. This Jesus of Nazareth. He's the only one I know. Have you given your heart? Some of you are saying, Yes, I have given my heart to Jesus. In a lie. You yourself know in a lie. Joshua said, He's a jealous God. Ah, if you continue, say you want like this, you want to serve him. I will serve him, I will serve him, and you still have some other things you are doing. We used to have a brother in our church. Anytime we have praise service, this brother can beat gong gong. Ah, this uh, what do you call it? Uh, talking drum. Very good at it. We thought he was beating under the influence of the Holy Ghost. We didn't know it was when he fell sick. He's of blessed memory to his he has gone. That we later discovered that it was under the influence of Tramador. He will, everybody will be dancing and be, be spraying money on him. Ah, Emimimon Shishela Rabodai. Emimon called Tramadon. Let Jesus, let him into your heart. I gave my life to Christ, to him, 1991. And I thank God I don't have any other God but him since then. Say your heart. Tell your neighbor your heart. I didn't hear you. Shout it aloud. Serving him means you must have made up your mind that the control of your heart is devoted to him alone. This was what made the three Hebrews to refuse to bow to the image of 
of the king. I have given the totality of my heart to Jesus. And I wrote in my notes, have you done your suit? We don't know the meaning. Just, uh, 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 we are just dancing to the to the beats. The meaning is that I have made up my own mind. Listen, I gave my life to Christ, I hands off everything. I gave my life to Christ, I hands off everything that does not belong to God. You too, give your life and hands off everything. You know, I spoke about two things. What's the second one? The reason I said both him, receiving him, and his frequent truth is because Total transformation does not take place the same day you open your heart to receive Jesus. Follow me. After you have received Jesus, you need to open up your mind to the second thing. What's the second one? Consistent or frequent truth. Some of you don't want to change. You will hear the word of God. The word of God speaks truth to you, but you, you just put up the Odeishi nature. Odeishi. You still go back to your old nature. See, it is not the day you became born again that there will be total change. No. Change is gradually, step by step. As you hear a truth, you make up your mind. You hear a truth, you make up your mind. You hear a truth, you make up your mind. You hear a truth, you make up your mind. You hear a truth, you make up your mind. You hear a truth, you make up your mind. Not that you hear a truth and you are still hardening your heart. You are not serving God. In Acts of Apostles, chapter 2, 41 to 42. Acts chapter 2, 41 to 42. Look at this. He said, Then they gladly received his word. Show them, let them see. They gladly received his word. Sorry. They that gladly re re received this word were baptized. And the same day were added unto them about 3,000. And they continued steadfastly in the apostles' doctrine and fellowship. And in the breaking of bread and in prayers. Look at, but look at the first one. And they, and they continued, no, 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 the first one. Verse 40, 41. And all they that received, then those who gladly received his word. Cherike, borrow, bashem, It's not, you won't change one day. But it's gradually, as the truths are coming. That's why, open your mind for the truths of the word. Jekor or could change here. That's what it means to serve God. Because you have given your heart, one, two, you open up for his truths. As the truths are coming, you are hearing it. Ah, oh God. Pastor, I've thought about marriage. Oh, and I love, I love to have a happy home. I'll go and try this truth. Are you getting what I'm saying? Okay, Pastor, I've taught us again. Okay, he has taught us again that we should not allow anger. Ah, and I know that I have anger issues. Oh, I will go and work on this. Ah, Pastor, I've taught us again that we should stop stealing. That stealing is bad. Oh, I will go and work on this. But you know, Pastor, I've taught us again that we should stop lying. He has shown us on the word of God. God's word is against lying. I will go. Are you getting what I'm saying? That's how truth comes, and that's how change comes. I wrote something down that I want us to, to pay attention to. Hear me. It shows us that serving God. Serving God is to totally submit to his instruction as you discover them in your daily walk with him. Let me come again. It shows us that serving God is to totally submit to his instructions as you discover them in your daily walk. In your daily walk. As you are 
growing, you are meeting truth. Then you change by it. You meet truth, you change by it. You meet truth, you change by it. Let's go on. This is the pattern. This is the more reason. Listen to this. This is the more reason you see that some believers grow faster and stronger than other believers. I don't know whether you have noticed this. That two people can join the church at the same time. And before their very eyes, one has become more spiritual than the other. Have you noticed that? Yeah. You know what makes it so? It is each person's level of openness to the truth. Some people come to church with odiashi mind. You sit down there. Is there anything pastor is saying? Tell them. Not tell us. Tell them. But another person is seated. He's saying, Lord, my heart is ready. I'm desperate for you. Please help me. So you now see that somebody will be angry. When did, when, we, we pastor love one person more than the other. When did that person join the church? That person met me in church. Listen, no pastor wants to be close to a carnal member. Even in the midst of Jesus' 12 disciples, you will always see Jesus with James, John, and Matthew. Where, where are the nine? You can determine how fast you will grow. You can determine how strong you will grow. The church where I got born again, within three months I became a minister. I got born again in that church. Within three months, they started welcoming me in minister's meeting. Within six months, I was made deliverance minister of the church. The people I met, I started to cancel them. Why? It is my response to the word. Now, some will not even come with a she or dear she mind. Some people came to church with an offended mind. Who is he to talk to me like that? Even my father cannot talk to me the way he's talking. Is he my father? So, okay, you are looking at the man that is preaching. You are now sizing his age. He should be in his um, 40 something. Me, I'm 62. I look gorgeous. I carry a push there's one of my sons in this church he has been asking me some questions about bible these days and i said to myself this guy is growing i love it anytime he comes to me to ask me questions i'm happy this guy is growing I love it when you grow. God like it when you grow. Not that we are being in church. We follow you up. You have a headache. We follow you up. You open new business. We follow you up. Every single thing you want to do will affect your service with God. And you say you are serving God. That's why service to God is a personal thing. So I hear now. The more, listen, the more available you are to serve, to receive and obey the word of God, the faster and stronger you grow in Christ. In Christ, spiritual maturity is not determined by how long you have been in Christ. It is determined by your devotion to hearing and living in accordance to the word of God. Let me read that one again. I want you to hear it. In Christ, in Christ, spiritual maturity is not determined by how long you have been in Christ. It is determined by your devotion to hearing the live, sorry, sorry, hearing and living in accordance to the word. That's what determines maturity. That's why you'll be shocked. Somebody that joined the church last month will be canceling you that have been in church for the past 10 years. And you'll be shocked. So when the spirit of pride wants to come, you do like that. Baolode. Baolode to find my bami sorrow. To find my pastor, me jubilo. Oh, Dagbani. I want to ban sin at the end. Only a man can come to me. One John John Jay Kono, but one John Dagbani same rate. The faster, the stronger. 
Are you learning something at all? I want us to finish it. I want us to finish it. Apart from that, what should I also surrender? What should I also surrender? You don't only surrender one thing, no. What else should I surrender? Look at the next thing you should surrender, number two, three. You should surrender what you have that God can use to reach others. What you have that God can use to reach others. Surrender it. What you have that God can use to reach others. And I wrote my example here. I learned a lot from the life of Mary. When she decided to allow the Lord God Almighty to use the, her womb as a means of transport for Jesus our Lord to be brought to the earth. See how she responded to the plan of God to use her womb. Let's go to Luke chapter 1 and verse 38. Look, let's learn from the, from the response of Mary, the woman that gave her to Jesus. Now, Luke chapter 1 verse 18. Now, what's the point we are talking about? What should you surrender? You should surrender what God can use, what you have that God can use to reach others. That's what it means to serve God. Luke chapter 1, verse 38. 38. 38. 38. Look at her response. The angel came and said, Mary, you shall be with a child. He shall be, his name shall be Jesus. Ah, Mary now said, Master, wait. I have not known any man. I'm a virgin. How will that be? He said, the Holy Ghost shall come upon you. And that which is in you shall be called a holy thing. Look at our response. Everybody look at this. Let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. Then Mary said, Behold, the maid servant of the Lord, let it be done to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. And to bani yuba Bible. Abite bani yuba Bible. Everyone goes on the screen. And to bamo yuba kakuba me tunka. You know what Mary said? Mary said, Ah, you know, share um, your maid servant. I'm the maid servant of the Lord. Let it be done to me according to your word. No, me be she fell nuwa. And the angel departed. Do you know what she will lose for agreeing to use what she had? Listen, she was a young sister in church. Yo. She did not, she had a fiancé that they were dating themselves. Fiancé you know, for what can you? And you know, if suddenly you just see your girlfriend got pregnant, will you still think of wedding again? Answer me now. You think of wedding again? You won't think of wedding. Somebody that you didn't touch. Hallelujah. You won't think of wedding. This lady did not think of anything. All she was thinking is, Allah don't fell me, Uluagba. I wrote something that I want to read to your hearing and I want you to listen to me very, very well. See how she responded to the plan of God to use her womb. Beloved, this should be the response of whoever claims to serve God. When it comes to the will of God, using what you have as a means of reaching the world, do you know that her shape, hear me, and the pain, her shape will be lost, the pain of carrying and nursing the baby she will also feel. Yet, she surrendered herself without asking further questions. God, oh, sorry, sorry, where am I? Where am I? Where am I? Where am I? If to, sorry, if it is today's generation of gifted children of God, what would they actually say? Let's not even talk about the womb. Let's start from here, the choir. You have good voice. God wants to use you. And they, they are telling you, you know what, sister, we need you to be at the choir. Like, what will you tell God? Some of you will be quick to say, ah, I can't, I can't, ah, I will meet the choir, I can't, I can't kill myself. 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 I can communion a handle communion things arrange the communion after service pack it and clean it I don't have time I don't at times the way you talk about time 
I just look at some of you and laugh. If sickness holds you, you will know that that time that you think is in your hands, it's not in your hand. May you not have sickness. brother. We followed him to the hospital. I was there. The doctor said, ah, brother, I'm a huge too. He was going like zombie. He was just going like this. When things like this happen, he should teach us lessons. Can I tell you this truth? There is nothing you have that is yours. I want to need business to one shop. You have shop, Abby. Where you do you know when they built that shop? Do you know the people that use the shop before you? Do you know who will use it after you? Kilawa Palawafu. Somebody has been there before. You know what? I was telling myself. I was just praying at home. And the Holy Ghost made me know that there is nothing that man owns that is actually man's. I was thinking of my mother. I was thinking of the plans I had for her. I was thinking of how we used to talk that she would be saying, talking about our future. Now she's gone. She's no more. She no longer knows what is happening to me. I was now thinking of my children. That are these children actually mine? Which means the way I am thinking of my mother that my mother is not like an heir that I can no longer hold. That's how one day me too will be gone. My children too will not be able to hold me. So actually, if you look at it, everything that we think is us, is not even us. That car that you are holding this year as if somebody used it before you. Hey, Release yourself. Be humble. If he needs you for anything, render it with all humility. At least I just mentioned Bumi stores now. And I said, ah, she's of blessed memory. She used to sit somewhere here. She's gone. Whatsoever she left in, shop, in the shop, she could think about it when she was alive. Not now. So use the time you have to serve God. And how many times that is God asking for you from yourself? He's not asking for 24 hours. I, I had the testimony of one man that went to meet the devil for money. The devil gave him money. But the condition is that he must sleep at the grave site two times every week. They said, the man said, we Christians don't understand, don't appreciate what we have. He said, anytime he gets to the grave site, it's like the hours of the day, of the night, is so slow. For the rest of his life, to win your money, feel it two days every week. Kill alone, why be low? Sir, 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 I don't have time. I don't have time for evangelism. Ah, Mary said. I'm just your servant. Let it be to you. According to your will. Sorry, I'm taking a little bit of your time. At a time, you're not answering. When I look at things, at things, these things I often wonder, if today's generation of gifted children of God are actually serving God, because we virtually need to either pay or beg them before they partially make their gifts and 
You know, have you, you either pay them or beg them. Hey, Joe. Hey, John to your lawn. But I'm freaky. Hey, Joe, share my wallet, praise Lola. Hey, Joe, move along, pay him. Share my wallet. Share my wallet. Hey, Joe, my wallet, I'm going to leave five minutes. Five minutes, I'm going to follow you. Beloved, I wrote here, because we virtually need to either beg or, or pay them before they, but they, use, they make use of their gift, talent, money, or even time to be available for the things of God. Hear me. Peter released his boat without asking questions. Can you please move this boat a little into shore to, to the sea? No problem, sir. And Jesus finished preaching. What is happening to us today? Do you even know that some of you, the time you even gave to God to come to church, you sit down in church, you are not even in church. Some of you have slept. Me, me, Sundadalano. She church, time on Epelo, Lono, Yeku Palara. Some of you, you are in church, you are still using your phone to ping. What does it mean to serve God? It's what we are looking at. It will surrender all. There's no time. I cannot go back. Let's look at the last question. Where does the passion to serve God really comes from? Are you seeing church? Say I hear. Tap your neighbor for me. Say neighbor. Did you hear what the pastor said? He said. Where does passion to serve God really comes from? Let's look at John chapter 12. Verse 3 to 5. John chapter 12. Verse 3 to 5. Ah, you'll be playing this song for me. I love the man of Galilee for he has done so many much for me. Let's read together after the count of three. One, two, and three. Let's go. Then Mary took a pound of very costly oil of spikenard and anointed the feet of Jesus and wiped his feet with her hair. In wait, what's the most important thing to a woman in her body? I know here you now. Women, women who are even confirming it, they didn't doubt. She brought her hair and began to... Okay, let's finish reading. Let's go. And the house was filled with the fragrance of the oil. Verse 4. Let's go. But one of his disciples, Judas Iscariot, Simon's son, whom will betray him, said... Verse 5. Let's go. Why was not the ointment sold for 300 pence and given... To the poor. But was that what he meant? But nobody understood what Mary was doing here. She took, the Bible says, a very costly oil. Some versions we say, if we sell this perf, the perf worth one year salary. That's what some versions say. So, she used one year income, savings, to buy one perf. Came to church and pour it on Jesus. And was using her hair to wipe his feet. Why? Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. Let's see. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. Be fast, be fast. I've taken time. Luke chapter 8, verse 2 and 3. Labor Sata. We are reading King James Version. King James Version. I want every one of us to read together. After the count of three. One, two, and let's go. And certain women who had been healed of evil spirits and infirmity. What's the first one? Mary called Magdalene, out of whom had come seven demons. Now, the Mary that broke the oil, the perfume, was Mary Magdalene. Now, look at her case. When Jesus came into her life, Jesus casted out how many? Seven demons out of her. Now, read verse 4, verse 4, verse 4, verse 4. Be fast, be fast, be fast, be fast. Shaga. Okay, verse 3. Let's... Oh, verse 4, yes. Let's go. And when a great multitude... No, 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 no. Verse 3, sorry. We read verse 2 before. Let's read verse 3. 1, 2, 3, and let's go. And Joanna, the wife of Cusa, Herod's stewards, 
and Susanna and many others who provided for him from what? From their substance. These people gather themselves together will be giving to the ministry of Jesus and meeting their need. You know, I had the question I'm asking. What's the question? Where do passion to serve God comes from? It springs from the heart of a person that understands the level of mercy and grace he has enjoyed. That's why she went to use one year salary to buy path. To say, for Jesus, I can do anything. Some of you are born into a Christian family. Me, I was born into an Islamic family. Some of you didn't face any challenge. They beat me seriously because I gave my life to Jesus. Some of you didn't see anything. Me, I saw a revelation of Jesus by myself. And I saw the love he gave me. I saw how my life would have been destroyed. But he, he redeemed me by giving me salvation. You not say, I should be joking with my service to him. That's why Mary Magdalene, the disciples were saying, ah, ah, who is it called you now? And who can you for perfume? You know, Jesus just like that. About tap a film, you can't call all the way from me. Ah, eh, Monto Lua Shefe me. That's why I say, play that song. I love the man of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. For me, as a Falabi. He has forgiven me. All my sins and send the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. Do you know what the man of Galilee did for you? Only me, shaking way. Ask all pastors if they invite me for program. The program is six o'clock. I get there ten minutes to six. The pastor, you are our guest speaker. What are you doing here on time? No, I came on my own. I have gone to preach in programs, convention of churches, and I know I can beat drum. And I get there, nobody is beating the drum. I will just go there, sit down, and begin to play. They will be, who, who is playing the drums? So, hey, our guest speaker, our guest minister. Who is the minister? the minister? Serving God at Agabangebeli. I love Jesus. I love Jesus. I'm telling you, I love Jesus. Before I gave my life to Christ, I used to have this very serious stomach ache. My mother said they told that when I was six months old, a baby, that this boy will not last three hours. My stomach would be sounding like gen generator. But it was when I gave my life to Christ, he stopped. The one he came asking. Do you know what I've learned since then? I love the man of Galilee. The, the passion to serve God springs from that understanding. I cannot have more than my wife. I have one wife. It's okay. I cannot go into anything that is sinful because he has done so much. Timba decide to go against his will. Now, let me ask you, why are you serving God? Some of you. To your money, Moshe Sumo. Mama, Jen, what much you? To your mom, Moshe Sumo. Abby? Some of you. To your car, Moshe Sumo. Mama, Jen, what caught you with looking full condition? Timati, what in me, Uri? Urugu. For me, he forgive my sins. 
in our days at Ibadan we were going for a fight. That fight was to happen October 1st, 1991. I gave my life to Christ a few days before that day. Some of those, my friends, are dead. I will have died too. Because the way me, I used to fight, even if you hold gun, Timba Binu, only no Michelin, no Kijis will have me, Father, who sent to Binu to me. Go, go, the president, Matefe Numio. Oh, 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 come in, Jokon. I be when I be chef from where that Even as a pastor, ati fun lowo, ati fun ni gbogbo e, lo ba sha nti wa, lo nti wa. Ise e ma dandun kan lowo e. Mo ba ku gbogbo awon minister wa pe ka lo be. Boya to ba ri won, e ba mi ha le mo. Bi gbogbo won ba de be, gbogbo na ba n preach bible fun. I follow pa gbi e. Where the insurance of you could sink out to my shell and look at butter, look at she buy. Ha ha, a woo, 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 I gave him nine. I just jacked his trust. I lifted him up. Open the boot for me. Oh, yeah, 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 Jesus look there. Okay, you were there. Okay, you were That's why when I see some people, they say they get, they get angry. What you come in on I was here. I want to talk. What they had a mobile book on what to a bar boss in one way. What they so call it? What they got 39,000. What they in law. But when you want to say, ha, 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 ha. Oh, I can't swear you had me. Oh, God, me love you, Romy. She can't hear you. I didn't come down one morning. I followed them. As they saw me coming, Tale, when you have been conscious, for me, no, what's up? He looked at me the way because he just brought out the 39,000 and handed it over to me. The whole liberty road was saying, Pass what you believe, pass what you believe. I know. Who I was before Jesus accepted me. And he transformed me. That's where the passion to serve God comes from. They are not supposed to be begging you. Sincerely, nobody is supposed to beg you to use your gift for God. Nobody is supposed to beg you to use your time for God. Let's talk about number two and close. Where does the passion to serve God come from? Number two. I learned this one. 1 Samuel chapter 15, verse 17. From the life of King Saul. Show us. Let's read it. 1 Samuel 15, 17. 1 Samuel 15, 17. Fast, fast, fast. I don't have time. I've taken almost 30 minutes of your time. 12, 30. We are cutting close. So Samuel said, let's read together. One, two, three, and let's go. So Samuel said, when you were little in your own eyes, were you not head of the tribe of Israel? And did not the Lord anoint you king of... Now, kilo wa shele si, si so, uti dagba lo juwa re avi. Igba yen lo yen bolo we. I want to read it as I wrote it. Hear me. Whoever understands that he is a product of total grace will serve God. And it will be a lot of people who are not going to be able to do it. You will sing a lot of people who are not going to be able to do it. I know that grace made me who I am. I'm telling you. If you remove the grace of God from my life, I am nobody. She was saying, "To bad your mercy, mercy, this is mercy. Be bad, you jamma unko konsiye. Serve him well." You know, I was looking at the body of the late former president, uh, governor of our state, when they were putting him inside the mortuary. That's a, the later color, Christopher Lawakala. 
he was naked. I was, they put it on Facebook. And I said, everything. Is this not it? This generation, hear me, is gradually losing the vibes that our fathers had. That's why I'm talking to you like this. This generation is losing it. This generation don't want to serve God at all. This generation wants a, a gospel that is convenient. It will run. You won't fair. And that's not the way our fathers did it. I was listening to Archbishop Duncan Williams. Or a robot was preaching in a crusade. They announced to him that his son died of drugs. He ran to bury the boy. Came back to preach again in the evening. This generation is losing it. Crucifier. One man do the end to my lead the praise. One man do the end to my shopping prayer. Top of belly, there's no genuine reason. Me, I love the man of Galilee. Rise up on your feet. I love the man of Galilee. Tell him, for he has done so very much for me. He has forgiven me all my sins and sent the Holy Ghost to me. I love the man of Galilee. One more time. I love Jesus. I love him of Galilee. For he has done so very much for me. He has. Ah, Sagada Baba 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 Baba. I love Jesus. Yes, I love you, Jesus. Now begin to pray for fresh fire in your service life. Fresh fire in your service life. Lord, I pray that you pour more fresh fire upon me. I want to serve you more than this, Lord. Help me, oh God. Cast out every lukewarm spirit. Begin to cast it out. You spirit of lukewarmness, get out of my life. You backsliding spirit, get out of my life. Begin to pray for yourself. Lord, pour your fresh fire upon my service life, upon me, O oh God. I want to be more dedicated and devoted to you in my service. Are you praying for? Are you praying to the Lord? I want to be more dedico de dedicated, more devoted to you in my service, O oh God. Help me, Lord, that in all the places I have fallen back, give me fresh oil. Fresh oil. Ooh, I love Jesus of Galilee for he has done so very much for me he has forgiven me all my sins and send the Holy Ghost to me. I love Jesus of Galilee. He has forgiven me all my sins and send the Holy Ghost to me. I love Jesus of Galilee. Father, I ask for a fresh baptism of fresh fire upon our service lives in the name of Jesus. In all the areas we have allowed the lukewarm spirit, the weak spirit, to enter our hearts and to quench in our fire. Father, we block those ways. We command such spirits to live our lives. We command their works destroyed. Rekindle our fire, O oh God. Thank you for this is done. 
in Jesus name I pray shout I have a new fire now I didn't hear you shout it aloud